and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Pro and Bro Wrestling Podcast. We are your hosts. I am Arnold Telegaarda. Mr. No Days Off, Fred Rosser, WWE veteran. Therapy session starts right now, baby. <laughs> starts now. And today is going to be a super exciting episode because we have a guest um, that's going to be coming on later. Jake, that I want to marry. That you want to marry, and yes. We'll explain why I want to marry him. Put yes. a ring on it. Put a ring on it. Hey, is that the dance? Isn't it like this? Huh? Isn't that the Beyonce, like, put a ring well, on it? Well, you're the choreographer. You do it then, Dan. <laughs> I can't. I huh? can't. I can't. You do it then. Like you mentioned, we have Jake Atlas coming on. And in my opinion, he is one of the underrated up-and-coming stars. Before we get into all that, it's been a minute since we recorded a podcast because... Well, you've been in France, man. I've been in Paris. We missed a week, huh? Yes, Can we, we tell did. the audience that we missed a week? We missed a week, man. Consistency. Life, life happens, bro. Consistency is important, but we... But Literally, we we bust our ass. You yeah, know? we try to get our brains behind it. Mm -hmm. You know, so we try to double up sometimes. Yeah, uh, we try to stay ahead of the game, but we missed a week because we're making moves, and there's some bitches in Paris, <laughs> France. While I'm at the American Black Film Festival in Miami, we both making moves. Yeah, man. And you've had a lot of encounters since we last seen each other i guess i guess leaving leaving or coming to the american black film festival my mom being a psychopath getting to getting to the airport early and all that stuff she was driving me crazy this weekend seriously she was driving me crazy so uh we're connecting in houston and like she's like all right we got to make our connection we got to make our connection and like i'm i i look at the time i look at the itinerary before and it's like two hours you know mm -hmm. so i said mom what, what time is the flight and she's like it um it's about to leave it's about to leave i look at the flight and mom the flight don't leave for, for two hours i said you lost it you want to rush you want to run run so she starts you know power walking to the gate and then yeah. as she's power walking i run into uh joe roman wow and like i roman reigns yeah and like I was calling, I know him by Joe, so mm -hmm. I was calling him Roman, Roman, Roman. And like, a, he, he thinks it's a fan, fan you yeah. know? So I tap him, and then he turns around and he's like, hey, yo, what's up, Uzi? He didn't have his shades on. Um, he had his shades on? No, oh, no. he didn't. No, okay. he didn't. And so I, he turned around, hey, what's up, Uzi? Um, and then I said, yeah, man, I'm just, you know, uh, connecting, making a flight. All right, and then my mom comes up, and, she, and she's like, oh, hi, Roman. <laughs> and then Roman's walking away, and I'm walking away to make my flight, and yeah. then we just say, all right, let's take care. All so, right, cool, man. Uh, it was just a brief encounter. Nice. Uh, he was making a connection. Sure. I, I was making a connection that was going to be in two hours, but my mom was freaking rushing me <laughs> to the damn gate. Um, but, yeah, then, then I seen him again recently at TV. Right. Um. But yeah, I was at TV recently. You know, I yeah. was at uh, the Staples Center for Raw, mm -hmm. and um, I was at the uh, uh, Toyota Center or something like that in Ontario. Okay, about an hour from where we live. Um, and yeah, I was just there being nosy, and I literally said that I say, "Hey, what's up, everyone?" You know, I'm just here uh, seeing my friends, being nosy, mm -hmm. and everyone laughed and everything. <laughs> but it's always a good feeling because people were genuinely happy to just see me. Um, right. I always say I'd never want to be one of those guys that shows up backstage. I was talking to Tyson Kidd and catering. I was like, oh, you know, I always get nervous coming back here because I don't want to be one of those guys that just uh, hangs out and like, you're like, oh, here's this guy. <laughs> uh, I'd never want to be one of those yeah. guys. But uh, Tyson's like, no, you're really well liked. Yeah, everything. that's true, man. So um, I just... It gets overwhelming for me because yeah. there's so many faces. You've been backstage. Oh, but, my God. You know, I wish you could have... Uh, uh, Pedram, uh, owner of Headquarters Clothing, was mm -hmm. with me on Tuesday right. when I was backstage hanging out with everyone. Yeah. But like I said, if you were in town, mm -hmm. that that would have been you. And you would have seen <laughs> everything that was going on oh. and you know, seeing the morale. Right. Um, and, you know, the morale is kind of wishy-washy. It's, it's <sighs> like, you know... They see AEW, a lot of people see AEW as competition, and yeah. they might, might want to go there, mm -hmm. and maybe WWE's like, oh, no, no, let me give you more money, so... A lot uh, of unhappy campers, man. Yeah, but it's, you might be unhappy, but your bank account might, you know, look a lot better, so what yeah. I'm trying to say is, like, um, that's how 
that's how WCW was keeping their guys. Or was it okay? Um, I didn't know that. Well, with you know Ted Turner, you know offering people more money to just stay with WCW and also um, less demanding dates. I think that was the selling point because um, Scott Hall said that you know it's not like they doubled their salary from like WWF. Like, they didn't really make that much more, but they did make more but with half the dates and that was like the selling point for them mm. but yeah i know what you mean like later on they were when they were dying they were they offered everyone the world yeah for example someone like shelton benjamin mm -hmm. um you know i don't think he's being used on tv as of right now yeah but hey you know WWE's offering him more money yeah. so if uh aew offers him the same amount you know for less amount of dates i'm sure he would jump ship but you know, WWE's offering more. Same thing with Rhino, right? Um, they they're not like using him. But yeah, I think Rhino's done. I think in Rhino, July, like yeah, yeah next he's, month. He's already accepting booking, so I think yeah. he's happy with his career and everything. And I'm sure he can do well on the Indies. Yeah, but like and, you were, and also I think he wants to get involved in pol politics and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, but again, like he was making. Uh, they offered him double for not doing anything and they just want to keep him you know that's such a weird mentality I'll, I'll never understand that man but people do take that offer and and that's not a that's not a bad thing at all because like who are we to judge we don't know their situation exactly. Exactly. money is money and you know sometimes people prioritize family and happiness yeah. and people define happiness in many different ways mm -hmm. like um so mike canellis he took. He was complaining about his position position in WWE, but he signed a new five year contract with them, mm -hmm. and they offered him more money. So there's one. There's some that hates the situation. There's others that benefit from it. You yeah. know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, that's basically the morale. Uh, but everyone was just very nice to me. Yeah. I'm just happy to uh, genuinely see everyone. And you know, I had a counter with Triple H. Mm -hmm. And again, he's still one of my favorites. Yes. And he was rehearsal with a segment. I forget which segment it was, but I was, of course, with the owner of Headquarters Clothing, Pedram. Mm -hmm. He he was with me, and the encounter with Hunter and I was simply, um, you know, I do, you know, I do miss it here. Yeah. And uh, I went on again. Pedram would know every detail that I said because it was like a blur to me. Right. But Hunter and I was just genuinely cordial to one another, and uh, who knows? You never know. Yeah. Never say never with WWE. So the counter with Triple H and I was very cool. You know, he's still one of my favorites, Arnold. Right. Um, so we'll see what happens, man. Like I said, uh, one monkey don't stop no show. The show must go on. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Jake Atlas on the phone here with us. Jake, how are you, bro? I'm doing great, man. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I've only met you twice. The first time was during your match with uh, Fred Rosser, and the second time was actually in front of the Staples Center when we were trying to get into Raw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> oh man! By the way, dude, your match with Fred—that was um, the obviously the first time I've seen you live, and you're you're amazing, bro. I'm not just saying that; like, you're one of like the best wrestlers like I've ever seen. Oh, thank you so much. That was like a year ago, right, Fred? That's yeah. Like oh, year. man, September 5th, man. I know the day and everything because my claim to fame is uh, 16 years in the business, top five favorite match. Uh, Jake, you know, uh, I've been doing this podcast for a little bit and it's just fun for me, but it wouldn't be right if I didn't have you as a guest for our Pride Month and having you share your story, I always say, don't die with a story and you tell it, man. So, uh, you know, let's get to the bottom of how we met and go from there. How did we meet? Um, I think, if I remember correctly, um, how did this all come about? Well, I came, well, I came to Santino Brothers, I think, soon after my release. Uh, sometime in maybe November of 2017, and uh, yes. and I, I and I knew nothing about you, Jake. I knew no. if you hadn't came up to me, we wouldn't be having this conversation. So I knew That's nothing. Right. I remember. I, I remember now. Yeah, you were at the dojo, and then um, we were just working, rolling around. I think I was told ahead of time um, that by like Joey that you would be there. 
So anyway, we I think we wrestled and everything, and everything was fine. And then it wasn't until the end of class that I pulled you aside and I like told you, hey, I'm gay too, and um, I really appreciate you know what you've done for us aspiring wrestlers and people who are in the business. Um, and I remember being so nervous because I didn't like. How do you tell like? I don't know. I don't know how. I I'm still figuring out like how you just tell someone like, hey, I'm gay, like right. without coming out because I'm already out. If that makes sense. Yeah. Like I, like I don't need to come out again. Like people <laughs> already know. But Fred didn't know who I was, so I was like, I need to tell him. Right. Um, and yeah, I'm glad I did because now we're like we're good friends. Yeah. Dude, I, I was watching uh, your documentary on Wrestle Days, and I swear, man, I had to take breaks like watching that just because how emotional it is, and I, it's so hard not to um, not like you. You know what I mean? It's so hard to not root for you. Like little things that you would say just like tug on my heartstrings, man. Like stuff like how you were so surprised that you know how like you know fans buying your merch, and you know you you never thought that you know you would feel accepted in that way i i literally had to hit pause on that i'm like <laughs> i had to let this simmer i need i need a moment man this it's so it's so well done thank, thank you so much i mean the, the the people who work on the wrestle day stuff were the same people that actually filmed or helped film yeah um, my match with fred um so i'm really glad that they were able to start up that wrestle days kind of series on youtube um, because it's really shown a lot, a light on a lot of talent here in Southern California. Yeah. Um, and actually, one of the, the the guy who created it actually got signed to WWE. I don't know if you guys. Have Jake, seen. Jake, Jake. I met him recently. I was being uh, nosy backstage recently when they were in Ontario and uh, Staples Center. And yes, I did meet him. I did meet him, and we talked for a while. Yes. Yes, Keith. Right. Yes. Yeah, he's like uh, he's gonna work on their documentary side of things, so that was really cool. It's well shot, man, and um, congrats on the Ultra Pro Light Championship, bro. That was oh, a huge you. moment for you. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I think I've been champion for six months now. Hey, and, is that the longest reigning? Uh, no, I think um, someone's been champion for like nine. So okay, almost, almost there. there, almost there, almost man. There. <laughs> I was, um, you know, as I, as I said earlier, watching your documentary, I, I found it so fascinating how you got introduced to the sport of pro wrestling, you know, like at first being introduced watching Lucha, you know, and that was your first, like, uh, first impression of wrestling. And then you started watching the Attitude Era and you're like, wait a minute, this is almost like, this is a lot of promos. And, yeah. you know, and it's... Yeah, it was so different for me. Um, you know, in Lucha, it's more like the presentation and stuff and yeah i mean they cut promos whatever but it's not like a story right um, it's very flamboyant and it's very artsy and it's just a whole different culture yeah um, looking at it from an entertainment perspective and then when you when i found wwf and i was watching it with my brother right like you know at the time i thought this stuff was real so i was like Me too. oh my gosh like this is intense like yeah. these people don't <laughs> like each other yeah uh, yeah, so it was a, it was like a, it was a, a shift, even though it was the same, it sure. wasn't. Um, you mentioning that, you know, you thought it was real, you mentioned the documentary in the story how um, you're watching a, a Lucha show, and was, I think it was your uncle that was heckling your, yes. <laughs> that wrestler, and yeah. you know, he put you off afterwards, and you got like, really scared, like, I, I could totally relate to that. Uh, I remember my first uh, wrestling event that I went to was um, a a dark show um, for World Wrestling Federation in the, in the Arrowhead Anaheim Pond and the main event was the Road Warrior um, the Road War Road Warriors against uh, Shawn Michaels and Hunter Hearst Helmsley and this is during the whole um, DX versus Heart Foundation era and I had a, I had a sign and um, in the front it says HBK rules and on the back it says Bret Hart sucks and I, I think I was like whatever, like a nine year old kid. But I remember like going to the arena, being so scared of like so <laughs> hesitant to like put up the sign that says Bret Hart sucks, thinking that what if he sees it and what if he comes at me? Because again, just like you, I thought everything was real, man. I, I remember thinking like, man, how does the match finish exactly in ten minutes? Just enough to fit the two hour time frame, you know? So. Yeah. <laughs> when you're a kid and you don't know that these guys are like 
guys outside of what they do. Yeah. Um, it was definitely scary. Yeah. Um, who's uh, who's your favorite wrestler from the Attitude Era when you first started watching WWF? Um, when I first started watching like WWF, yeah. Um, like, I think I con- like I I really liked The Rock. Um, yes. There was just I mean he's the greatest of all time in my absolutely opinion. absolutely. So um, he was just someone that I just looked up to because he was just so charismatic. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean initially he was someone. Like when I first started watching wrestling, that I just gravitated towards. He was my brother's favorite wrestler. Yeah. Uh, but it wasn't until like Eddie Guerrero started to really Ooh. pick up steam, like later on in years, um, that I would identify like, oh, that's my guy. Like that's the guy that you know I want to kind of be like, and that's the guy that um, like he is my favorite wrestler of all time. And uh, just a combination of like The Rock's charisma and yeah. Eddie's talent in the ring, like. It was just so, like, um, inspiring for me. And then, you know, others that are honorary mentions. Like, I loved, I loved uh, AJ Styles during sure. his TNA run. Sure. Um, he. It was a. I was. It's a long story, but I like I. Um, I had to switch over to TNA because it was my loophole because I would always get in trouble and I would not be able to watch WWE <laughs> uh, or WWF at the time. And so my loophole became TNA and I found AJ Styles. And yeah. so he was someone I really looked up to. Yeah. And then, you know, of course, uh, being gay, you're always, uh, well, at least, I, I don't know if Fred has a different opinion, but we have this like feminine, sensitive side to ourselves. And so right. I always grew up watching women's wrestling. Mm. So I have to give it to my girl, Trish Stratus. She was a huge part of my life as well. Of course. Um, a huge inspiration to me. I thought she was very great on the mic. And I think she's one of the best women on the mic ever still to yes. this day. And um, yeah, like her, like her, her, like her being so mean. Like <laughs> sometimes when I mean, I get it from her. I'm just like, yeah, I get nice. Mean too. Nice. Uh, yeah, no, like I mean, just a combination of all of those people. Sure. Um, really inspired who Jake Atlas is today. That's great, man. Uh, speaking of Trish Stratus, um, I was watching a video and she's she was actually listed as one of the um, wrestlers that broke the mold. You know, you know when she first came in, WWE signed her because obviously because of her looks, right? And uh, she yeah. was. Um, a manager for Tess and Albert and like she totally just broke out and became like a huge not only um, sports entertainer but a huge wrestling star because she has the in-ring abilities inside the ring along with her mic skills as well yeah uh, and she's actually the people people I, I've, I've listened to a lot of podcasts from other wrestlers and they they definitely like put her over saying that she's kind of like the Stone Cold they, they put her up there with Stone Cold Steve Austin for like for the female wrestlers, you know, yeah, around that I, I era, agree. yeah. Um, you you might uh, do you follow The Rock on Instagram because you talked about how um, The Rock was uh, your favorite, and then Eddie Guerrero. Um, recently, The Rock posted uh, a video on his Instagram account about his match with Eddie, and he praised Eddie and how he he countered The Rock bottom. And I thought that yeah. was really cool because The Rock doesn't really post a lot of wrestling videos on his IG, you know. Right. 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 No, I thought it was amazing. I think any time that anyone, um, any time anyone kind of just remembers Eddie, yeah, it's it it's it's kind of cool, you know, because you you get to see like like how much he meant to people yeah. and like the influence that he had on people, whether they worked with him mm-hmm. or they inspired him because you know when we were kids or whatever. Like, there's so many there's so many wrestlers at WWE now that you know, always pay tribute to uh, Eddie. Like, yes. Like Peyton Royce is always wearing Eddie gear. And, mm-hmm. you know, um, certain of the certain luchadors are always doing uh, like the Eddie moves. Sasha and, Banks. Hey, man, yeah. don't forget. Don't forget about my girl, Sasha Banks, you know? Yeah, Sasha <laughs> Banks, like, loves Eddie Guerrero, too. Yeah. So, like, he, like, I don't know, it was really cool for The Rock to be like, you because you, like you said, he, like you mentioned, he hardly posts wrestling stuff on IG, but he knows you know the importance of Eddie and, and what he's meant to people and the influence he's had and you know that's always going to overcome whatever reason that The Rock doesn't like to post wrestling right. so like it doesn't matter because yep. it's Eddie and, and so I thought that was pretty cool um, what's your favorite version of Eddie? Uh, my favorite version of Eddie was definitely when he won like the WWE title around that, like that like, like my favorite match of all 
time, and I just tweeted this. Mm. My favorite match of all time was him. I, I don't know. I don't know if people. Well, I don't know. I don't know why I love this match so much. Mm. But it was Kurt Angle and, uh, and Eddie Guerrero at WrestleMania 20. Like I just love that match so much, and can watch it like so many times. Yeah. There's just something about it that I just. Like, it, it's amazing, you know? Like, I don't know. Like, I mean, Angle and Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 21 was really good, too. But I guess because it's Eddie, like, that, to me, like, I don't know. That's one of, like, if not my favorite match of all time. But, yeah, like, when he won the WWE title, like, that was my favorite version of Eddie. Because right. Because it was, like, this Latino yes. is, is at the top of yes. the WWE. And, you know, he's a face. And he's also very transparent about all the issues he's going through in his personal yeah. life and, you know Kurt Angle was throwing digs at him and it was just so personal like right. I don't know I really enjoyed that no era. I understand why that that's your favorite because as an Eddie Guerrero fan like that's as good as it gets. I think he came in WrestleMania 20 as the WWE champion and yeah. he left as the WWE champion at yeah. WrestleMania. And it it honestly does not get any better than that. So I feel like that was like him like winning an Oscar, you know what I mean? Like that, that was his moment. So I do understand like why that's your favorite. Yeah. Um, how about now, man? Like for WWE, who's like, what, what superstar do you feel, um, you know, that you have your eye on? I know one of them is Ricochet. Oh, Ricochet's the man. <laughs> uh, I love Ricochet. I really, yeah. I mean, uh, I really, I'm, um, I'm really happy for the guys that I looked up to, um, mm-hmm. that are getting a chance to do, WWE now, yeah. Um, like so, AJ Styles and Ricochet. Like, I'm very happy for what they are doing and what they're able to accomplish. So, um, obviously, a lot of the independent guys that have been signed, I keep up with their product. Yeah, or I keep up with like NXT and stuff. Like, that's the brand that I watch the most. Yeah. Um, but if there's anyone that I'm like happy for the success and I'm like truly, you know, inspired, like, oh my gosh, there's you know, there's a way, you know, there's like there's light at the end of the tunnel or whatever right um it's definitely ricochet and aj styles i mean styles i watched him when he was in tna um, right like the unbreakable match in 2005 with him and mm-hmm. daniels and joe again another one of my favorite matches so i've known his work for a while yeah to see him you know go to wwe and like kind of settle down but still be one of the best in the world is incredible yeah and then ricochet is like I didn't watch independent wrestling until I started wrestling. Like, right. I started paying attention to what was outside of WWE. Yeah. And the people that I gravitated towards were, like, him and Will Ospreay. So, for yes. I me mean, to see Ricochet, you know, achieve success at WWE, like, mm. I think that's pretty dope. Yeah, man. Jake, you know, I'm always rooting for you, bro. I'm always rooting for you. That's why I'm, you're one of the first guys that I contacted to be on the podcast, to share your story. Um, I, I, I always tell people in interviews, who's, uh, who's the next breakout star? Uh, who's, uh, who's out there representing the community besides me? Uh, I'm not the first and I'm not the last, but you're one of the first names that I bring up. And I always say, and people probably take it out of context, but you know, when I say I want to marry Jake, meaning <laughs> I, I want to marry Jake, I'm like. Just wondering if you were going to bring that up, Freddie. Of course. When I talk about marrying you, when we were able to go full speed uh, back in September, you know, it was. Such a beautiful match for me personally because everything clicked. You listened to me. Um, you know, so if I could work you 10 nights in a row, like working the Ascension up in WWE 10 nights in a row, uh, I was married to those guys. I loved working, working with them because it was scrappy. It, it was unorthodox when we could have fun on the live events, but no one got hurt. We all kissed and hugged backstage, but that's, that's the quality you have. You have great instinct, Jake, uh, and I'm always rooting for you. Um, you're... Uh, How old are you now? You're 24 or what? How old are you? Yes, I am 24. 24. uh, And like, these are your your years where you're getting those reps in and you're learning. Uh, You got three, you're oozing in championship gold. Like how, like, you know, how, how how many belts you have? (laughs) I have three. Oh, humble brag. (laughs) Oh, just three. (laughs) Yeah. And you were just making moves, Jake. And, um... I'm your biggest fan, bro. I'm your oh, biggest I fan. I, I'm 
appreciate that so much. You know how much that means to me. You're a really close friend of mine, and you've introduced me to a lot of great people in and out of WWE, and I can't be any more grateful um, for what you did. So for me and for many others, so the best thing I can do is always, I always wear your bracelet. I always Aww. wear the hate bracelet. I always see them pictures. I always see yeah. them pictures. I always see, when I see your pictures, I always look at your wrist to see if you're wearing <laughs> it. I always see it and I really <laughs> yes, appreciate it. I, I always wear, I have the block the hate and I have a, a pride low Kai bracelet and I always wear them together because, you know, you, you were a huge inspiration to me. And um, I want to take you wherever I go. So <laughs> Sit in your little pocket. That. Thank you. <laughs> wait, you wait. You have uh, you, you have an action figure, right? Too, right? I have an action. No way. Too. I'm actually looking at him, looking at it right. What? He's sitting, he's sitting down on my uh, like my little stand there. Wait, how can um, people how can people buy this? No, it's my action figure. Well, oh, your action figure. I thought Jake had yeah, his Jake, own action figure. I was like, wait, Damn what? It. Jake? <laughs> I have an action figure of Freddy. Got yeah, it, so, got it, so, got it. So, so one, of the, one of the videographers who records uh, PWG, um, he came up to me one day and was like, hey, I want you to have this. And it was an action figure of Fred. And I was like, oh, like that's really <laughs> oh. sweet. Yeah. So... Um, I used to I used to carry it around in my travel bag everywhere. Nice. But then uh, I'm a diva and I travel very. I I take a lot of stuff. So <laughs> As you like should. Poke, it would like poke out. So then I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna leave it on my stand. <laughs> he's, sitting, he's sitting right there, and I look at him every day. He's yeah, that's just sitting cool, there man. watching over me. Did you ever collect <laughs> um, action figures as a kid, like wrestling figures? I didn't. Okay. okay. No, I collected belts, but then I went through like a rebellious phase. Okay. I, like, I don't want to go through wrestling anymore, and I threw them all away. Uh, <laughs> I still remember those belts too, man. Like I had the styrofoam ones. Yeah, that, that's what I, the toy went to. Yeah. I remember I, being so mad because like the Intercontinental Championship belt looked nothing like the Intercontinental Championship oh, belt. Yeah. Like the strap was brown. Like it was what? like it was never brown. Yeah. Hey, I also watch. Um, your like, undercover boss episode, man. That was so cool. Yeah, that was a year ago that it aired. Yeah. Same, yeah. Be it honest. So did you know fun. that it was Steph? No, I did not know, <laughs> that, know that it was Stephanie. Um, I was under the pretense that we were filming a sports documentary. I see. For, for a blogger. But no, I didn't. I had no clue. I can say that that was 100% real. I, I had believe no you. clue it was her. I believe you, man. Because I remember like watching the episode and she puts on like the blonde wig and the nose. I'm like, come on, that's Stephanie. That's still I Stephanie. Know, I, guess I just had no, I mean, I had no idea that I would meet Stephanie. Maybe. Like it wasn't sure, in my mind. Sure, So I was never like, I never thought that that would be possible. Yeah. So yeah, when she revealed herself, like they showed the clip of my reaction. Cause uh, I was like, whoa. Yeah. Like, that, this is crazy. I, I loved your answer though when she was asking you like oh what do you what's your goal you want to be the first openly gay WWE champion and it's gonna happen man with your talent it's it's destiny. I, hope, I mean I hope so I just want to be successful at WWE yeah uh, and I've never been I've never been shy about saying that every time someone asks me like what my end goal is I always say I will, I'm always going to strive to go to the WWE. Whatever right. that means on my journey there, if I sign somewhere else or if I end up somewhere, that's fine and I'll go through that process. Sure. And who knows, my mind may change, but I just want to be successful at wrestling and I want to be really good at it because it's one thing to show kids that we can do this. Right. That's great. They, they, they know that now. We've got girls like Sonya Deville and Ashley yeah. Oz. Yeah. And we've got... Um, you know, uh, guys like myself, like Pero, like Effie, like Anthony Bowens, like mm -hmm. Fred. So they know that this stuff can happen. So now what's the next step? Right. It's showing them that we can have an NBA championship ring, that we can have a major league baseball ring, that we can be champions, that we can be successful and still have the background that we have. So Absolutely. I, that's, that's my mentality. You Jake. Know? So I, I hope so. Jake, you would get me fired up, just like <laughs> just like you always get me fired up every time. Uh, you know, I stop by Santino's and you're coaching, you, and 
the way you coach, I tell you right to your face, it, it turns me on because he is. Yeah, <laughs> because he's gone through the yeah. process. So, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, he's uh, firing these kids up. He's like uh, putting them through boot camp. And like he's really, you know, uh, it's coming from the heart. Mm-hmm. He's inspiring. I mean, there's people there that do it as a hobby. Right. And there's people that probably want to pursue it as a career, you know. But yeah. He's gonna push you regardless, and like uh, it's a it's a it's a beautiful uh, beautiful thing to see. You That's know? right, man. Yeah. And, I love wrestling. So. Yeah, <laughs> um, I, and I think the one other thing that separates you from the AJ Styles and the Ricochets is not only like you know you guys all have in ring talent. That's obvious, but. Early in their independent days, Ricochet was terrified of like being on the mic. You know, AJ Styles at the time wasn't known for his promos, but man, you can like, you can definitely cut a promo on the mic. Like the one that I saw before the match um, with Fred, like that was that felt real to me. You know, and you set it up like it was like it was a movie. Yes, and it was so well done, man. I just think those like just as much as your as your wrestling, I feel the mic skills also comes naturally to you. And it's so it's so weird because like again like that was my first first impression of you like in the ring you know and then afterwards I I talked to you outside the Staples Center you're just more mellow and, yeah. and like wait yeah. that's like two different two different guys yeah Kenny and Jake are two completely different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> completely different um, but yeah I mean I I I will admit that I'm a better talker when I'm a bad guy which makes me feel bad but yeah. <laughs> I love the I love cutting heel promos. It's so easy to me. Uh, but um, yeah, I, I enjoy mic time. I mean, we we all need it. So <laughs> yeah, I feel like cutting heel promos is, is more fun, anyways, because it's easier to get people to not like you than it is to get them to like you, and that oh, goes for 100%. everyone. Yes, one hundred percent. Jake, uh, anything overseas, uh, up and coming? Have you wrestled overseas? Can you yeah. uh, can you elaborate on anything that's coming up, maybe overseas? Um, overseas, uh, nothing coming up yet. Um, but I did just complete my first UK tour. Hey! Um, at, the, at the end of May, um, I went to England and I wrestled for Fight Club Pro, which is actually um, owned by Trent Seven, who nice. works for who works for NXT yes. UK. Mm-hmm. And then I went. To, and I wrestled Travis Banks there, who is also on NXT UK. Wow. And then I wrestled for Over the Top Wrestling in Ireland. Okay. And I wrestled Jordan Devlin, who is also on NXT UK. So that was a lot of fun. And it was my first time going to the United Kingdom, and I had an amazing time. And the matches were really great. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going back. Yeah. Um, it's just a matter of figuring out dates and logistics to go back. But sure. yeah, I mean, it was an incredible experience. I never, I ne- I was the first, and I, I put this on Facebook, but I was the first person to ever go to Europe in my family. That's a huge deal for me. Like all we've known growing up is like Mexico and the United States. So for someone in my entire family to take a trip overseas to like this new continent like that was insane for me and I never thought that I would have I've done that at 24 like you know you grow up and you have these fantasies of like oh I'm gonna travel I'm gonna go here (laughs) you know but you never know how you're going to do it right what age you're going to be when you do it or what you're going to be doing what your career path would be so it was pretty surreal to get there and be like, "Whoa!" Like I'm here for wrestling. Yeah. And like, like it's it was it was an amazing feeling. So I hope I go back. Um, like I said, it's just a matter of figuring out dates and stuff. But sure. Even if it's even if it's next summer again, like that that would be okay for me. Like it, I don't know, but I, I'd love to go back. You better be collecting those miles, boy. Yeah. <laughs> How how are the fans in the UK? Are are they more passionate? Like how different are they? I would say they're like a combination of like Japanese fans Ooh. and American fans. Wow. Where okay. They respect everything that's going on. Yeah. And they cheer almost everything, but they're also rowdy, like the American fans. That's the best so of both like, worlds, man. That's that yeah, sounds like, like the, the perfect it's crowd. Really cool. Like I feel like the Japanese crowds, like they're just very calm. They're yeah. very respectful and they're very like. You know, if there's a high spot, they just, like, clap oh. really loudly. But, like, the American crowds are, like, super rowdy and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
So it's a combination of the two, and they're really like they're appreciative of everything that you do. Like, right. no matter what, if it went good, bad, whatever, like they're just like, thank you for performing for us. And yeah. That, I don't know. It was really cool. The UK fans are really cool. That's a great feeling, man. Um, okay, I have to ask you this. How's what are your thoughts on AEW? And I know that's a very broad question. <laughs> it's okay. I think it's great for wrestling, and yeah. I think it's great uh, for WWE to have um, competition. Yeah. Um, it, I know a lot. A lot of my friends work for AEW. A lot of close friends, um, like Scorpio Sky, is a really close friend of mine. Jungle Boy is one of my best friends, mm-hmm. and you know these guys um, have put in work so hard. Uh, on the independent wrestling scene and to see it pay off with what Tony is doing and the Bucks and Cody. Like, yeah. I think they're putting out a really great product that can spark an int- can spark a fire in the entire wrestling world. I see a lot of people saying, oh, like, hopefully WWE, like, it'll spark a fire. But for me, it's like the entire wrestling world should feel a, a yes. fire uh, lit under them yes. to be the best they can. Yeah. Uh, especially for me, like I'm going to do my best in any situation that I put in, so that AEW can take a look at me and say, "Oh my gosh, this guy's worth it. Let's offer him a contract." Absolutely, and that would be that would be amazing for yeah. me. I would love to work for AEW, and I would love to go through that journey. And like nothing is guaranteed in life, and you don't know where you're going to end up, and you're constantly evolving and constantly changing and growing, and these experiences that you go through and these accomplishments that you that you achieve like they all change you as a person they change your goals they change like like you just you just have to enjoy this process and enjoy the journey yeah Um, there's no you know if you're so focused on the end goal like you're just going to be miserable because what if you never get there or whatever or it changes um but I think AEW is doing something really good, especially, you know, being so inclusive with having Nyla on the roster and having Sunny on the roster. Mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. just shows the entire wrestling world that they don't care about um, barriers and they don't yeah. care about limitations and they don't care about, you know, you know, whether you're black, white, right. gay, transgender, like they just care about your talent. And if you're able to perform for them, in a high caliber and entertain these fans then then they'll work with you and that i think is is incredible yeah well one of their taglines is aew is for everyone they keep saying yeah. that which is beautiful yeah yeah now, I, i'm i'm definitely i'm definitely happy that aew came about and we'll see where it goes Jake, you know, like for me, doing this podcast, it's uh, therapy for me. I'm not trying to, uh, and it's fun between me and my homie, uh, Arnold. It's, it, every time I do this, it's therapy. And we always talk about, um, you know, our ups and downs and stuff like that. Um, and I always say practice what you preach. So I know we have our ups and downs. Uh, uh, mental, I'm a big help health advocate for mental health. I'm really good friends with uh, Mauro Ronaldo. He's a big supporter of me uh, since day one, since I met him at TV. Uh, we all have our ups and downs. What's like the best piece of advice that you like to give to uh, you know the community? You've done Be A Star, and I hope you continue to uh, do Be A Star with WWE. Um, what's the best piece of advice that uh, you like to give to your LGBTQ audience or anyone that gets bullied into silence? Um, I think the best advice that I can give them is to find support in, in someone that can hear them. I think if they're vocal, it's so much better. You mentioned that the podcast is therapy for you, so you're able to talk, whether that's talking to Arnold or talking to an audience um, that's listening to this podcast or you're you talking, bro or you or, or you you're, t- you're talking about it and talking is so important and that's one thing that um you know people are starting to catch on now you know either through social media or just in the media like people are starting to understand that it's okay to reach out to someone um and talk and i think that that's what's important um within our youth is to you know show them that they need to go out and find someone that can listen to them 
um, or hear them out. And, and it's so important because if you're, and I've been through this myself, and I'm sure Fred, you can relate, like if you just bottling up these emotions, these emotions turn into triggers and these thoughts turn into triggers and that's what causes depression and anxiety. And you don't know when you're a kid, you don't know how to deal with this. So just talking about it helps and it doesn't have to be family. It can be a friend that you trust and, um, you know, it can be a teacher or just someone that you can confide in so that you can vent, you know, studies have shown that just talking and airing out what's going on, like just hearing your own voice and hearing your own problems can kind of just put things into perspective for you and allow you to breathe. It's almost like breathing. I mean, you use your mouth to breathe. So if you talk, you're also breathing like you're, it's, I mean, it's hard. It's always going to be hard. And no matter how much we fight, and no matter how much we stand up, and no matter how loud our voices are, there's always going to be LGBTQ youth who struggle with finding someone to open up to. And we just, as a society and as leaders, uh, you and I, Fred, we just, it's our responsibility to just be completely transparent and open that it's going to be okay and it's going to get better because you, you we can only hope that these lgbt kids that you know are struggling with talking about it or struggling to find someone we can only hope that they have an instagram account come across our accounts and be like wow like okay this is where i can kind of mm-hmm. you know this is my escape mm-hmm. you know seeing these athletes or seeing these people and it doesn't have to be us this goes across Every every entertainment form, um, you can talk. You you know they can find Laverne Cox or James Charles or you know James different Charles, yeah. LGBTQ people who are yeah. in the media and in the industry, um, and just look to inspiration so that one day they can find the strength and the courage to be like, oh, I can breathe. Like it's gonna be okay. Jake, you know, social media can be you know a little too much for people. Some people might need a break of some sort, but I always say in all my speaking engagements, my Instagram, my social media in general is an open diary to the world. So anything I have ever, ever posted always came from the heart uh, with the intent to inspire, motivate and educate our youth. So, uh, you know, my fight's much more bigger than in the ring. It's outside of the ring, fighting bigotry and hatred and being the voice of the voiceless when it comes to our youth or anyone that gets bullied into silence. So there's 7 billion plus people on this planet. So uh, the more we can share our story, the better, because, uh, you know, not only are, you know, are we gay, but we're athletes, you know, and being gay doesn't define us. I don't celebrate, ooh, I'm gay, I'm gay. I don't celebrate being gay. I celebrate living my life free from hate and free from judgment. I agree 100%. I think we're on the same page on that. Jake, Jake you um, you had a recent tryout with WWE. I'm sure you've elaborated with other interviewers. or um, Can you elaborate with me on how that tryout went? And, uh, sure. If you can elaborate on any news on that. Sure. Um, I had a tryout with WWE back in December, um, a, few, like a, a, a few months ago. And I actually obtained that tryout through Stephanie McMahon, um, so I'm very grateful. Um, it was intense. It was an intense three-day tryout at the Performance Center in Orlando, Florida. And I had Robbie Brookside there. I had Gerald Briscoe, Sarah Amato, uh, Matt Bloom, just the cream of the crop of the coaches at NXT were present. Um, and it was intense. It was very intense. Uh, I was one of the few independent wrestlers that were there for the tryout. Usually they bring in 30 to 40 people and about, you know, 10 to 15 of us are independent wrestlers. And the rest are these freak athletes <laughs> who can kind of do anything and everything. Um, but I, it was so cool to see, you know, not even just myself, um, but the entire, you know, independent group, the, the indie wrestlers that came in, just keep up and, and kind of go through these drills. And because we knew what, were, what was coming, we knew what to expect. Um, and it was, it was hell, but it was so rewarding, regardless of what the outcome was um, for any of us. It was just so rewarding for each individual. And I, I think that it was, it changed my perspective, my career path, uh, 
it just changed a lot about how I look at where I want to end up. Um, and they gave me great advice, great feedback. Um, Kenyon, Kenyon Seaman actually um, sent the promo that I did to Stephanie so that she can watch it, which was kind of nerve wracking for me. Um, but she saw it and she emailed me back and she said that it was a great promo and she you know, gave me good feedback on it. And um, unfortunately, I wasn't offered a contract uh, that I can say that that was official. <laughs> um, but I think that it wasn't, it's not a no, like a, a no for sure. Right. I think that, I mean, I'm two years in and I am getting, like, I, there, like I'm two years in and there's a lot going on in my career mm-hmm. that, you know, I, I need to learn how to navigate. I need to get better. I need to, like, I just look at it as a learning experience. Um, I'm 24 years old, only two years wrestling. I know that that's not the end of, you know, my journey with WWE. And I'm not going to look at it that way. There are so many opportunities that can arise with them. Um, They can call me back for a Be A Star rally. And I'm always going to advocate for them. And I'm always going to be grateful for Stephanie and, you know, everyone at WWE. um, Because they've been, you know, a very great company, you know, to me. And, um... You know, I, I, it was an incredible experience. They feed, they, they do these YouTube, uh, like these YouTube series um, uh, at the WWE channel, and you know they started a series on the Performance Center about tryouts. And so the first episode that they released actually featured me. So that was pretty cool um, for them to feature me and my story and my journey at the Performance Center for all of these you know WWE fans to see. And so now they get a chance to see me. And if I ever go back, whether that's next year, two years, and if I ever get signed, whatever that may be, um, they'll have some sort of background as to, oh my gosh, this is that guy, you know? Um, but no, it was it was intense, but it was very rewarding. Yeah, I actually saw that video, Jake, and it's not even like just a series. They made a whole separate YouTube channel for that. Like it's called oh, yeah, WWE yeah. PC. Yeah, and, like yeah. I watched that. It was really cool, man. Yeah, no, I was really, I, when I, I remember waking up yeah. and um, it like popped up on my YouTube stuff and I was like, oh wow, this is really cool. Yeah. Well, uh, before we wrap it up, for me to get through cardio and stuff like that, sometimes uh, if I need to play a video, the video I play is of course our match because it's uh, my biggest claim to fame. So for me to get through those 20 minute cardio sessions, I have to watch our match. So it's like the most viewed video on my YouTube channel. Um, I'm always rooting for you, bro. Um, and uh, is there anything else like you can plug social media wise that you'd love to plug on our podcast before we take it home, baby? Um, sure. There's a couple of pride shows going on this weekend that I'm a part of and I'm very proud to be a part of. If anyone listening to the podcast is um, you know, in the area in San Francisco or in Chicago um, during Pride Weekend this weekend. It's the last, it's one of the last, it's, we're wrapping up Pride Month. Um, so it would be really cool if a lot of you can come and check out the shows. Even if you've never been a wrestling fan, um, we have a lot of LGBTQ wrestlers featured on these shows. Um, we've got Hood Slam up in San Francisco and then Rise in Chicago. And I'm very excited to be a part of these shows with a lot of great talent. Um, and we get to wrestle and do that. So, um, and if not, you can just always follow my journey um, on Twitter and Instagram at I am Jake Atlas. Um, I would appreciate your guys' support, and let's see where we end up. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jake, for being part of this podcast, man. Uh, and you can take comfort in knowing if, you know, n- knock on wood, worst case scenario, if wrestling ever stops, you can always be a motivational speaker, dude. You're, you're so inspirational, man. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. But the grind don't stop, baby. So you keep doing what you're doing. And I'm <laughs> proud of you, damn it. You're pr- I'm thank proud of you. You know damn well I'm proud of you. And I appreciate you, so you doing this, you son of a oh. bitch. <laughs> thank you guys for having me. I really appreciate it. All right. All right peace thank out. you, Jake. Okay. Thank you. What a great guy, man. Yeah. I mean, like I said, um, I always say, you know, this podcast isn't guest heavy but we want quality yeah quality over quantity and um every guest is meaningful to me yeah and you know it being pride month june we're wrapping up pride 
uh, I said we needed to have someone on there to represent the community also. Yeah. Um, he was the first guy that I thought of mm -hmm. because uh, we just have a close relationship. So I'm glad I got to the bottom of when I say I want to marry Jake. <laughs> that means marry him in the ring. You right, know? right, Like, right. I could work him every night. You guys have that chemistry. The Ascension, mm -hmm. I can work every night. Yeah. You know, I don't mind being married to you. I don't want to be married to gender. <laughs> uh, but I want to be married to someone like Jake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and he's... 24. You know? I know he's spring chicken, man. Spring chicken. What a baby. Um, yeah, it's so cool because again, the first time I met him was through you, through the match, yeah. and um, after watching his documentary and how he presented himself there and talking to him on the phone, it's just a whole other level of yes. respect for for me. You know, yes. like he's and such like, a great guy. And when I mean good in instinct and good ring awareness, like he's seen. When you watch the match from Nuclear Heat, I'm going to be throwing it back and flashback Friday or whatever. Yeah. Uh, because that's my biggest claim to fame. Um, really orchestrating that match. Really, this is what I want to do. And this is what we're going to yeah. do. Yeah. Um, I would start off the sentence and he would uh, finish it as to what we could fill in the match with. Yeah. And it was the first time, like I said, that we went full speed. We didn't yeah. even like... Uh, uh, we just talked it out. Yeah. And the way I, I talk it out is just like, you know, I calm you down. Mm -hmm. I say, you know, it's going to be rough out there. Don't take offense to anything. I'm not okay. going to kill you out there, but you're going to know stuff is coming and it's real to me. Yeah. As soon as I walk through that curtain. Yeah. Even before, it's real. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to talk to him and just calm him down. Mm -hmm. So, you know, no happy feet in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and everything just clicked with us. Uh, and like I said, it's important for Jake to get those reps in. Yeah. Those reps, working better people. That's the only way you get better is mm -hmm. working with people that are better than you. True. And he's doing it, and I'm very proud of him. That's I'm very true, proud man. of him. Uh, yeah. I always say to not only him, but other people, the best piece of advice, you know, a lot of advice might go through one ear and out the other, but the best piece of advice from me to you is take care of your body. Your body right. is what makes your money, you know? Right. So if you can kind of get into implementing some yoga now at 24, yeah. at 34, you won't be uh, hurting. Sure, you know? sure. I feel great, thank God, knock on wood. Um, but guys don't take care of their body and after they're done wrestling, um, it's, uh, it's, it's not a good thing. They can't yeah. pick up their kids or yeah. they can't do, uh, uh, have an active lifestyle. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm glad Jake was able to share his story with us. Don't die with a story and you tell it, damn it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a great saying, man. I say it all the time. <laughs> don't die with a story and you tell it, man. Yeah. Yeah. So like I said. I watched that match to get through cardio, man. I watched that match to get through cardio. But like I said, him having good ring awareness and good instinct, like he set the tone when uh, if you go to that match back, and we'll put it on the YouTube and stuff like that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a link or something like yeah. that. Um, when, when you go to that match, it starts off by the people in the crowd cheering for me. And he goes over and says, I'm glad your family is here because tonight your retirement match. Mm. Bitch. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, retirement match, bitch. And he just, like, he set the tone. Yeah, he did. So I had to deliver. The and, story was told yeah, already. And yeah. no point intended. Uh, I'm 34. He's 23 at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, my time is up. It, his time is now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm always rooting for him. Yeah. I'm always rooting for him. Yeah. Uh, there's other, like you said, LGBTQ athletes that are representing like no other. Mm -hmm. Sonny Kiss. Yeah. Who um, I said I uh, wrote to AEW about uh, teaming. Mm -hmm. So you never know. Never say never. Yeah, it's true. So with that said, thank you guys so much for listening and watching. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you like it. And don't forget to subscribe. And for all you listeners out there, don't forget to follow us on iTunes at Pro and Bro Wrestling Podcast. And if you enjoy the podcast, give us a five-star rating and um, give us a review and let me know uh, what we can do better. Making moves, man. Making moves. I'm glad that we experienced Jake Atlas. Yeah, yeah, He yeah. shared his story, baby. On to the next, baby. <laughs> I love you guys. And until then, we'll see you next time. Block the hate. Salute the great. And cut.